Um, so could you please tell us your name and when you attended Susquehanna? Sure, Scott Haller, and I graduated in 1982. Um, you're a uh, uh, So just how did you hear about the harvest? Uh, well, from email. Um, that's because you already said, like, yeah, you, you said about your item that you didn't bring. Oh, the oh, item, right. yes. I don't have my item with me. Yes, okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> the item, though, I did submit um, by email is a petition mm -hmm. that I put together along with some of my fraternity brothers mm -hmm. uh, from the 80s, and we all signed it asking to keep Crusaders mm -hmm. and explain the reasons why. Mm -hmm. And the gist of it was, if you look up the definition of Crusaders, mm -hmm. it's someone who works very hard over a long period of time to achieve a goal they believe is morally right. And that's what it always meant to us. That's what we were taught it meant. Um, and we heard about examples of crusaders, like Martin Luther King was a civil rights crusader. Um, there are other people who were brought up you know, in the course of history who said, well, they crusaded for their rights, women's rights, equal rights, things of that nature. So um, when we heard about the idea of changing it, you know, we were upset because you know, it meant a lot to us. And I think especially people not just people who went to school here, but especially if you played a sport, I think you, you bond together with your teammates under that name. And Crusaders, you know, if you mention that, that name to me or to any of my fellow alumni, a lot of memories come back. It's like we have this metal box with the label Crusaders on it. And the idea of changing it was very upsetting to us. So we put together a petition and laid out the reasons why we thought it should be kept and why it should not be changed. We understood there were reasons for change, but we felt weighing everything in the balance, the name should still be kept. Um, then when the decision was made to change the name, I was asked to be on the name mascot committee, which was an interesting experience. And I really didn't know what to expect when I came out here, because I'm thinking, oh my God, what's going on in Seals Grove? Have they lost their minds out there? What's, what's happening? But I got to know the people on the committee and it was a great group. I really enjoyed working with them. And the lesson I learned was everybody on that committee and the people here now still love Susquehanna just as much as I did and my, my classmates do. It's um, what's best for Susquehanna. And everybody had a chance to weigh in on that issue. And a lot of people did. A lot of people didn't. And I was actually surprised at how relative few. There was, I think it was about 1,300 people weighed in and that's like six percent of the community mm. that had a chance to weigh in. Yeah. Um, so when it changed, you know, there were people who told me how upset they were and you know, I didn't know about this and I would say, what do you mean you didn't know about it? They have your email, I have your email. Everybody knew about this. Mm -hmm. And then it would kind of evolve into, well, I knew about it, but I never thought they'd actually change it. So you didn't bother to go to a conversation? No. How about the email survey? Did you respond to the email where you could just type in Keep Crusader and hit Submit? No. So, well, this is why it changed. Because not enough people responded to say, keep it. Now, maybe it would have changed anyway. I'll never know. But that was one of the things that, in talking with alumni, I found a lot of alumni didn't really understand what happened, why it changed, and what the reasons were. And going through the name mascot committee actually was helpful to me because I met the people who I'm sure some many of whom had voted against me and say no, what are you crazy? Let's keep let's change the name. You know, I, I remember ten years ago being at a game and the the tiger mascot went by and a group of students were standing there and one of them said, You know, it's so stupid. We have a, a mascot that has nothing to do with our nickname. If the problem is the name, let's change the name. And I thought to myself, and one of my fraternity brothers and I looked at each other and said, sooner or later, they're going to do that. And, you know, I understand it. I mean, when I was a senior, okay, I played football. Um, up to my junior year, there was somebody in a night costume on the sideline. By my senior year, gone. And we heard then, and it was, well, it's because of the Crusades and all that. So over time, you kind of got the sense that this could happen. But it was still upsetting because I think a lot of people misunderstood the reasons for the change. I know I heard a lot of people say, what do you mean? Are they saying Crusaders is a dirty word now or something? And that was never the case. It was merely a matter of 
we know what it means here and should mean here in Sealand's group. The problem is most of the world has a different opinion of what that word means. And it's very hard to get that across to people, especially people who are just going to shut their ears and say, well, I already know what that word means. You don't need to tell me. Okay. So, moving ahead. Um, the name mascot committee was really an interesting journey for me. Um, like I said, I got to know a lot of good people who really love Susquehanna, and we worked really hard to try to help the community find the name. I think a lot of people misunderstand that. They think that 23 people sat down in a room and picked a new name. That is not what happened. What happened was we tried to set up a process to get everybody involved and give everybody a chance to have input and uh, advice, guidance, whatever you want to call it, suggestions. Step one was trying to set up criteria to figure out what would be the criteria to help us get to a name that will last a long time. We don't want to pick a name that will last us five years or ten years and go through all this stuff again. We don't need that. Nobody needs that. So one of the things we really focused on was what will allow the name to last for a long time? What were the strengths and weaknesses maybe with Crusaders? What can we learn from that experience? How do we set this up so that whatever name comes out at the end will last hopefully for a long time? So we set up criteria about it has to be consistent with SU's values, uh, can't be offensive, uh, it should be unique, ideally, it would be nice. Um, it has to be relevant to Susquehanna's uh, culture or location or heritage in some way. Uh, that would be important. Uh, we talked about um, competitive spirit, that it should be, I think the word used was intuitive. It's really something that we don't have to explain. That was one of the problems with Crusaders is we have to explain to people what it means. So it would be better if we could find a name that we don't have to explain. Um, let's see, the others were mascot friendly. We knew that was a big issue. Everybody wanted a mascot. Logo friendly, so you could put it on shirts and coffee mugs and things like that. Um, and endurance. That was really, to me, was probably the most important criteria was, is this a name that can last a long time? Because the world has changed a lot since I was here 30 some years ago and it's going to change even more and even faster in the next 25 or 30. So can we find a name that can stand the test of time? Not something trendy, something that can stand up over time. And we thought if we use these 10 criteria, we'll probably come out with a name that can do that. So then we invited the community to give us suggestions. We got 400 suggestions, 100 of which were clearly meant to insult us. Uh, that's okay. We got 300 people who wanted to, uh, to s submit Crusaders, saying we should still be Crusaders. Okay, the name was not eligible. The board made their decision. They're not changing it. But we understood that. There were 300 other names that were eligible. And our job was to sit down together and try to sort out how do we get to the best of the, the names, names that can everybody can support and can last a long time. Um, and we did that. What we did was we individually kind of we set up a scoring system. We scored the names individually. Then we got together as a, as a committee on January 2nd. We had a big meeting. It was a long meeting. We went through a lot of names. And we came out with the five that we thought everybody can get behind. We may not love them all, but not names that people really despise either. And we put those out to the community. The community ranked them. Then it was whittled down to three by the community. Uh, then the board signed off on all three, and then the community chose the name. So when people say to me, you know, your committee chose the name, no, we didn't. The community suggested the names. We did not suggest any names. The community did. The community decided on the names. So that's my two cents worth or 25 cents worth of the history of the name. <laughs> I was here for some of it. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, journey. So I hope. You know, you guys are Riverhawks now. That's that's great. That name will mean. I hope I hope that name will mean as much to you as Crusaders did to me, mm -hmm. and still does. Uh, that's really what it's about for me. I came to realize something because during this process, I was also taking my oldest daughter through visiting colleges, including Susquehanna and other schools. And one of the things I came to realize is, you know, Crusaders triggers a lot of memories for me. Had our name been a different name? back then, if we were Riverhawks then, for example, would my athletic experiences have been dramatically different? Probably not. But I don't think I'd be the same person if I hadn't gone to Susquehanna. 
and that's what stuck with me. That was what caused me to say, okay, I'll be part of the committee, even though I didn't want the change. I'll be part of the process because I lost that's what happened. And I think over time, people will come to realize that. Uh, I know it must be hard for the seniors who've been crusaders for three years, and then all of a sudden you're not. Uh, I know if I were playing still, I'd be pretty ticked off. Mm -hmm. But I'd understand that, okay, there's a new name. And what you'll remember years from now is not just the name. You remember the people. You remember how much they meant to you. You remember the experiences you all had together. That's what remains in your mind and your heart, and that's what's important. Mm -hmm. So, thanks. Wow. Have any questions? Did you, did you see the uh, ceremony when they like when they unveiled the new mascot? No, I wasn't here for that, but I saw oh, the because they were, they were broadcasting it. On yeah, as well. I was actually at another college with my daughter looking at schools oh and trying to get it on my phone and I couldn't uh, it was, hold it up. I was there when they were doing it. It was actually like a really good event. Like, yeah. It was well-organized, Prez Lems, and I forget the guy who... CJ Williams. CJ, yeah, that was him? Yeah. He did a really good job, CJ. I'll bet. I, did, I felt he did a great job, and Prez Lems was just fantastic. I'm not surprised. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, the, the two of them. And, and Ron Cohen deserves a lot of credit. He was the chairman of the committee, and... He worked really hard, harder than probably a lot of people know, mm -hmm. to help this come about. And yet, he would always step back and let people do what they do best. And you know, he didn't guide the, the, the name selection by any means. What he did was help people to organize, because we had like four, four different groups organizing different parts of the process all at the same time, so that this could happen quickly. Because we realized, now the decision has been made to change, people are kind of in limbo. Student athletes are saying to me, well, well, what are we now? If we're not crusaders, what are we, the nothings? You know, of course not, but it was hard. So we realized we need to move this along. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not trying to go too fast, but we can't go too slow either. And it was, it was interesting because it was uncharted waters. Nobody's ever done this before here that we know of. Uh, so it was a very interesting process. I was very glad I was part of it. To be honest, I think it helped me. You know, it helped me move through the process. Some of my other alumni friends were not part of the process, and I think it's been, uh, it's hard for them to move forward because they, they didn't feel like they were part of it. I got to be a big part of it in terms of being on the committee and seeing everything that was going on and how hard we tried to make sure it was the community's choice, not ours. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those are my thoughts, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Any other? A lot more than I was expecting. Yeah. 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 It just comes flowing out. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're really fine, honestly. It's nice to get like the inside source yeah. of how the mascot got changed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell you, um, I'll, I'll just mention this. You know, some of the names that were submitted, I know certain names were much more popular than other names. Mm -hmm. um, Stags was a very popular name in terms of the number of people who submitted it. Um, and the thought process was basically, well, you know, Stags. The problem with that is most people think you're talking about male deer, mm -hmm. and the ladies obviously would not, you know, find that terribly inclusive. They wanted, you know, inclusive was one of the criteria. Mm -hmm. um, and people say, oh no, it's not about the male deer, it's about Amos Alonzo Stag. And a lot of people in the room said, oh, who's that? So now we're back to explaining our name again. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem with Stags, at least as far as I saw it. Uh, and I played football, and I thought, okay, hey, Amos Alonzo Stagg is more than a football coach. He was a mentor. He's a role model. The guys who played for him in the 50s and 60s say he was absolutely like a father figure in everything you could ask for from, from a coach and more. Uh, but I think we already honor him appropriately here. The name Stags, I think, would be misunderstood. In fact, when I saw someone complaining about it in the newspaper, the newspaper misspelled it. They had one G instead of two. And that was exactly the point, is too many people are not going to understand mm -hmm. what the name's about. Uh, another was Susquatches. Okay. <laughs> Susquatches, apparently, yeah. there were a lot of people who wanted that name. It's real popular amongst the students. Yeah, <laughs> as well. And we understood that. Um, I thought it was a clever play in our name. I thought it was unique, and it got points for being unique. The problem was, one of the other criteria was dignified. Is dignified. And I felt... A lot of other people felt it's just not dignified. Um, 
part of it is, I, I get it, if you're here, the Sasquatch thing apparently is, is a thing that's been going on for some years here, 10 years or more, and that's, that's great, that's fun. But for those of us who weren't part of that, it doesn't make sense to us. In fact, I look at it, you know, I'll, I'll give, date myself. I went here back in the day when people still remembered Abbott and Costello and the Susquehanna Hat Company routine, where they would make fun of basically of Susquehanna Hat Company. Okay? When I went on job interviews, I heard that a lot from people who were laughing at Susquehanna because that's the only association they had with Susquehanna was this Abbott and Costello routine. And I thought, you know, I don't want you know, students now or in the future to have people laughing at our nickname or at our name because they don't know what to do with it. And Sasquatch has struck me as a name that, you know, what's the image that you come up with? It's either a large hairy ape with its knuckles dragging on the ground that you can't really see and nobody's ever really found, or we're honoring something that doesn't exist and it sounds like we're the kind of people who say, oh yeah, Sasquatch, we believe in that, you know. Um, so I just thought, not really a great name. And there were people on the committee who really loved the name, and there were people on the committee who said, no, it's just not going to be a good name. The idea, remember, was something everyone can support and can last a long time. And we didn't think that, at least I'll say for myself, I didn't see that as a name everyone could support. I knew a lot of people would be very upset with that name. Um, I know I would have been. That's just me. But I was glad to hear it wasn't just me as an older guy. And there were younger people who were saying, no, we don't see that as a good image. You know, we want to, we don't want to be Sasquatches. We'd rather be something else that we can really identify with in some way. And that, to me, was the story behind those two names. And because I'm saying this because a lot of people have asked me, mm -hmm. what, why not Stags or why not Sasquatches? Mm -hmm. This is my interpretation and understanding of why. Mm 